What is up YouTube? Today we are talking about the Ethereum roadmap. There's some huge things coming in 2019 and 2020 that are going to change the game for the Ethereum protocol. You don't want to miss this video. Definitely watch to the end to get all of the juicy details. Let's hash it out. So guys, if this is your first time here, thank you for joining me on my channel. And if you want to build your knowledge, boost your cryptocurrency gains, and join the movement towards our distributed future, smash that subscribe button and hit that bell so you do not miss any of my future content. And guys, if you're in the path of Hurricane Florence, I wish you and your family safety and the best of luck this week and through the weekend. Please do stay safe and stock up on lots of food and water. Now guys, Ethereum has been quite a hot topic and a pretty controversial one lately with all of the price drops and you know angry miners talking about the reduction in mining reward and I have a video about that, I'll link it in the card above. But not everything has been positive for Ethereum, quite the contrary, most things have been negative. But I just wanted to come in and talk about the roadmap for Ethereum going forward into 2019 and 2020 and tell you about some of the things that are really gonna change the game for the protocol that is Ethereum. This is a make or break update for Ethereum and it is dubbed Ethereum 2.0. It's part of the Constantinople update, which is I guess part of that greater metropolis Ethereum update that we've heard so much about over the last year and a half. So let's dig into the top three things that I think are really gonna change the game for Ethereum, starting with number one. The first thing is something you've probably heard a lot about already as well, and that is Casper Proof of Stake. So originally Proof of Stake was supposed to appear in the Ethereum network sometime this year in 2018. I don't think that's gonna happen now because they've pushed this whole thing out, realizing that their original approach was flawed. So really quick, before we dive into some of the details, for those of you who don't know what Proof of Stake is, so basically this is how Proof of Stake works. Nodes on the network are able to stake a certain amount of network tokens, so in this case, Ether, to have the right to be a miner or the right to verify transactions. So then those stakers, they go in and they can verify transactions and try and find a correct block. And once they've found a block that they think should be appended to the blockchain, they can bet some of their tokens from that original stake pool on the correct block. And if their block is indeed the winner, it is appended to the blockchain, they are rewarded in network tokens relative to how much they bet on the correct block. So basically the way that this works is it's betting on the fact that those who hold the most value in the network token are going to have the most incentive to play by the rules and validate only the right transactions and only mine blocks that are legitimate and not do malicious stuff. Because at the end of the day, if they do malicious stuff, A, they are penalized, they lose their stake, and B, it damages the network and thus drives down the value of the tokens they have so much of. So proof of stake is much more scalable because it doesn't rely on proof of work mining and this crazy cyclical hashing. and. This is something that's super important. This is something that not only the Ethereum network has to battle with, but every other blockchain network as well, and that's scalability. Seven transactions per second for the Ethereum is not gonna cut it for enterprise applications, it's just not. So they need to find a way to build this up to a better level of scalability. And so proof of stake, Casper proof of stake specifically, is going to help do that. So what the open source community is looking to do is they're looking to take the proof of stake concept, bring it into Ethereum, but instead of just switching over fully to proof of stake, it's gonna be a hybrid system, proof of work, proof of stake first, and then they're gonna to look to transition to full proof of stake if necessary in the future. But here was the issue. Originally, when Casper proof of stake was originally pitched to be released in 2018, the minimum stake for a new proof of stake miner was 1500 ether. And obviously that throws red flags, like that makes it very centralized because only the whales, only the big guys can afford to be a staker in the Ethereum network if that's the case. So they had to go back to the drawing board and figure out a way to make proof of stake secure enough to replace proof of work in the future. But also they had to find a way to allow 
as many people as possible to afford to participate and be a, a minor in this system. Because otherwise you have these tragedy of the common situations where only the big guys can do anything. Only the big guys have a say. So what they've done now is they've said, we're gonna delay proof of stake until 2019, 2020, and we're going to introduce sharding with it. And by doing that, our architecture is going to allow the minimum stake to be 32 ether. And I know that's still a lot, but if you think about it, then you could have little pools of stakers and it's a lot better than having one giant pool or than having, you know, a few really big guys with, you know, tens of thousands of ether jumping in there and owning the network. I think that brings us really naturally to our second point and that is sharding. Sharding has been worked on for a long time in a lot of different technologies. One of the common technologies that I work with in my day job quite a bit as a developer is MongoDB. Essentially, you have a bunch of little mini databases and those are called shards and those help feed off of each other to get the information to where it needs to go. And Ethereum is looking to do something very similar. There are a bunch, a bunch of companies out there like Prismatic Labs, Consensus, some of the big guys in the Ethereum community that are trying to solve the problem of sharding in the Ethereum network. And the vision for this is that you're gonna have, instead of one main blockchain, like we have today, you're going to have a bunch of little sharded component chains. And think of it this way. The scalability problem comes from the fact that there's no parallel processing in the Ethereum network right now. There's one main chain and all transactions have to go through one pipeline and that is the mining pipeline for proof of work. There is no way for, all, for transactions to be mined in parallel in multiple different streams because that's inherently not the way the blockchain works. But if you can shard the blockchain and you can say we're gonna have little mini clusters of nodes that keep their own transactions, that keep their own state, and they feed a main blockchain network to keep track of the whole network state. That is a lot more scalable because then you don't have one stream of transactions, you have a bunch of independent little sharded blockchains that are doing the transaction processing in parallel. And one thing that's important though is that to get the benefit of a blockchain that's a universal system of record that's immutable, you have to have one main system of record to access. And in this sharding concept, that's called the beacon chain. So if you think about it, oh, it's like that beacon, uh, the beacon of truth, that's what that is. So essentially it's a side chain that keeps the state of all the different sharded networks and keeps track of all the transactions like the main chain does today. Scalability is the theme of these updates. And in my opinion, the first few networks that solve the scalability problem in a real elegant way are going to be the ones to really succeed in the next couple of years. And here's the thing, at the core of the Ethereum blockchain, there are some serious performance issues. And that stems from the Ethereum virtual machine, the way that works, and just sort of the language barriers that there are with Solidity and some of the smart contract stuff and just the network is clogged up from all these different things like CryptoKitties and such that inject such volume onto the network. So one thing that needs to be done to solve that issue is there needs to be a restructuring of the virtual machine itself that runs the Ethereum network from its core. And so that brings me to my third point and that is the Ethereum web assembly. And I think people are calling it, it looks like Ewasm, Wasm, the Wasm? Whatever, web assembly has been around for a long time. It actually runs most of our modern day web applications. And the idea is that web assembly serves as this sort of technology standard that allows virtualization for web applications to run super smoothly, super efficiently, and super fast, so that even a web application served from a distant server runs on your computer like it's running natively right where you are. It allows us to have these really feature-rich, dense web applications that run like butter on our browsers. So Ethereum wants to take that concept and apply it to the Ethereum network. Right now, the Ethereum virtual machine, it's not that fast, and it's not that efficient, and there are a lot of little pitfalls that you find as a developer, that really drive me crazy, and I know they drive a lot of other people crazy as well, not to mention Solidity that you write the smart contracts in, there are some pitfalls there too. 
but the WebAssembly update for Ethereum is looking to make the virtual machine a lot more efficient. It's looking to make it a lot faster and just a lot better to use. And the other thing is right now in Ethereum, contracts when they are deployed are automatically compiled and executed as part of the virtual machines process. That does take a toll on performance because there's a lot of processing being done that's not really necessary. So in this case, the WebAssembly version of Ethereum is looking to move over to an on-demand compile and execution for smart contracts, which I think is a fantastic idea. And finally, the Ethereum virtual machine update to Ethereum WebAssembly is going to introduce a super strict set of non-deterministic functions. And if you don't know what that means, here's the rule of thumb. Developers like deterministic functions. And what deterministic means is that if you put in a given input, you're going to get an expected output every time you run it through that same function. So a non-deterministic function by that same hand means that if you put in an input, you can get sort of an unknown range of different values. It's unpredictable. And that's why I'm most excited about that idea. And that's what I'm super stoked about. They're really taking their time to look at the binary level and make sure that they're paying attention to the performance implications and the security implications from the ground up. So guys, I know that was kind of a lot to unpack and a lot of it's also kind of technical. And so I was trying not to dive too deeply into what everything means specifically because I didn't want this to be a super technical video. If you're confused about anything, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. And I will definitely be doing a video on each of these topics individually so that I can really dive deep and give you some visualization about what these things are going to do in a more technical sense. Now guys, also, I would love for you to check out some of my other videos. I do a Token Talk Tuesday series every single Tuesday where I talk about a different cryptocurrency or some cryptocurrency news that you need to know. So definitely check out that playlist. And then I also have another video here that I'd love for you to check out. You can hit that in the YouTube card. Thank you guys so much for watching. Cheers.